Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. My name is Sean from Hoi Information Service. Today I wanted to talk about the search page. The first thing we're going to go over is the search for listings page. So if we go over and click on search for listings, you're going to see this page here. I know some of you had customized search pages in Research 5, so any customizations you've made will be pushed over to Research 6, so you won't have to worry about recreating anything. Your formats can now be accessed by clicking on this blue formats button. So everything you see here um, should be the same. We've, you, we're going to be using the same formats um, in Research 6. Uh, one thing we've changed is we've moved over other options which used to appear um, you know, on the search page itself. It used to, you used to be able to put your information to customer format, you used to be able to select your download formats from there. And now if we scroll down from here, you're going to see those options appear below. Your save formats are now going to be accessed by clicking on this save tab. So if we go ahead and click here, you're going to see your formats appear. We, could, we can use any of these formats by clicking on the use button here. Also, if we hover our mouse over this eye, you're going to notice it gives you a preview and shows you exactly what, format, what formats you're using in each of these. Your labels format is now going to be accessed by clicking on this labels tab. So if we want to perform a label search, we can just click on this tab here, select your answers. You can download the information using this little checkbox. And from there, we can go ahead and perform the search. Notice we have the selected formats preview appear above this little quick search bar. So if we had our information in MLS format, you're going to notice that that changes and shows you here. So let's, uh, let's go over and let's talk about the search page. Um, a couple of the fields um, will appear a little bit differently. Uh, this grayed out field just uh, want, just indicates that you can't type in anything into these fields. Uh, these are all preset answer fields, so we use this drop down here and select our answers from there. Um, the find field in research six now appear, appears as this little magnifying glass icon. Uh, so if we want to f find a project, we can just type in the project, click on this little icon here and select our answer. Your, your field previews on the bottom can now be deleted using this little trash can icon here. So if you click on this once, your field disappears. Your add fields can now be accessed by clicking on this red button. So if we want to click add fields and find any searchable field in our system, we can just go ahead and type in here. Click on this field, enter your MLS number and click on this check box to confirm the field. Once we close this, you're gonna notice the field appears below. I'm gonna go ahead and run a search now so we can take a look and see what the search results look like. We're gonna be using the MLS one line format. So we're gonna go ahead and click search now. So looking at your search results, you're going to notice the MLS one line format looks pretty much the same. If we do click on uh, an MLS number, you're going to notice the information opens up in front of you. In research 5, uh, depending if you had either pop-ups or tabs selected, your information would appear on a little tab on the side or as a pop-up window in front of you. So for example, if I had tab selected, you'd see a little MLS tab up here or a, tab, a TMK tab up here, depending on your view in the TMK information or the MLS information. And then you'd see a little search tab. And from there, you'd be able to tab between the MLS number you clicked on and your search results. And what we've done now is with the functional back button, we no longer need these tabbing options. So now if we wanted to go ahead and look at the search results, we can just go ahead and click on this little back button here and your search results page will appear. The same for the TMK information. If you do go ahead and click on the TMK number, their information displays in the same way. And if we do go ahead and click back, we see our search results. In research six, we no longer have a blue actions tab at the bottom of the page. Those action functions are actually framed to the bottom of the page now. So if we go ahead and open up copy, we can either copy the page, we can copy the checked or the not checked, and also put the information into customer format. These same functions are available for print, 
email, basket, and PDF. So I'm going to click on an MLS number one more time, and I just want to show you um, the differences between uh, Research 5 and 6. This MLS mid format, of course, does look a little bit different. In Research 5, your photos, uh, your history, your attachments, all would appear from uh, icons on the right-hand part of the page. Now to access that information, we can go ahead and click on More Listing Info. You're going to see those same options appear and also your actions. You can copy it, you can print it, you can email, basket, PDF, and also put it into customer format from this section here. If we do go ahead and start minimizing this page, you're going to notice that the fields actually start stacking. And eventually, um, this is how you're going to be viewing the information on your mobile device. So I'm going to just expand this once more. I'm going to click on the tax key now. So you can take a look at how the tax information would be viewed. So if we start to minimize this again, you're going to notice all the information start reformatting. And eventually the information starts stacking onto each other. So this is pretty cool. Even the sketch information is uh, resized. So you can see everything pretty much reformatted for your mobile device. So that's pretty much it for the search for listings portion. So next I just wanted to talk about the create a CMA function. So most of these functions below search for listings, I'm just going to go over briefly um, just because um, there's not many things that have changed with these functions here. So I'm just going to enter an MLS number um, to start the CMA. Just click on this green arrow to confirm. It's going to give you a little description of the property, the model square footage, the bedrooms. And it's going to tell you that it, it automatically searches uh, within a uh, plus or minus 15% of the living area. Next, we can set our sale date range. We can tell it we want to go one year back or two, two years back. And also, if you want to go further or less than that, we can also enter the month range. So in this case, let's go uh, yeah, 24 months back. Um, from there, um, it gives us an option. It says, do we want to include MLS data and do we want to include TMK data? So in this case, we're just going to keep both of those checked. And this C column is just asking us if we want to prepare the, if we want to personalize the report. We can narrow the CMA down further by entering more criteria. But in this case, I'm just going to go with the island four. <clears throat> we'll go ahead and click search now. Uh, you're going to see that. Uh, First column is just telling you that this is the subject property. Um, looks like there were no comparable listings for sale now. Um, there are none with any contingent sales and none that are under contract right now. Uh, we have a couple here that didn't sell, or just one I guess. And then um, we have a couple that sold within our time range. And these other comparable sales, this just represents sales that we don't have um, listed in our MLS system, but the, the public record information pu picked up the sale. So that's pretty uh, important to have. Sometimes we don't always have all the sales recorded in the MLS system, but since we have such an in-depth uh, public record database, so we have most of the sales anyway. So that's just a, a little bit about the create a CMA function. Um, next, I just want to talk about the get listing update function. So those of you familiar with this function should look pretty familiar to you. Uh, we have the option of uh, setting the date range for the update. In this case, uh, we want to say let's look for listings about 15 days back. And we want to find any new listings. Um, we want to find any listings that had price changes and we want to find listings that went contingent and that sold and just because it's going to be a pretty in-depth list I'm just going to change our format to just include the MLS information so we're just going to use the tax key range for 4 narrow it down a little bit further 
and just go ahead and click search. So we have our heading here. These are all your new listings that, um, that went on the market from, I believe it was 15 days, days back that we set it. Here are your listings that went contingent. And all your listings that sold within that uh, little time frame that we set. Here are some withdrawn listings and also price changes. Yep, so that's a little bit about the get listing update function. Going down the list, let's just go over the get parcel update. So this is a uh, this is very similar to the get listing update function, uh, except uh, these um, these categories are based off the TMK information. So it's whenever the TMK information sees a new parcel or the TMK, TMK information sees a sale change or any general change to the public record information, it will we'll use this date range to find that information. So um, I'm just going to say we want to search for anything that happened 30 days back and we want to search the island of Kauai and section 4 again. And then just to keep things a little more simple, I'm just going to unselect the MLS information and click search. So you see that there are, there are new, no new parcels in this, in, in this area and um, we have a few sale changes here. So this, a lot of these sales are going to be recorded in the MLS system, but since we are just um, searching the, the TMK database, it's just going to show you um, any time that there's been a, a sale change to the TMK record information. So in this case, uh, we have all these here, these sales all recorded under the public record. So we have all these sales recorded in the system. And this next page, quite a few sales here. And then we have what we call general changes. So that's um, just any changes to the public record information. I'm just going to open up the public record information one more time. So if there's some kind of change in here, um, it's going to show up under general changes. So that's a little bit about the get parcel update. Um, now we can go over search open house. So we can uh, set our, sale, our, our range, we can say we want to find any open houses that are happening today and tomorrow in, on Kauai. And yeah, we just leave our format as MLS one line and TMK one line. Just click search now. No properties. So I guess we have no open houses tomorrow. Oh, sorry about that. So I selected only my open houses. So let's do all open houses today and tomorrow on the island of Kauai. Yep, so we have a couple here. So this is just telling you that there's open houses um, on these properties and kind of it gives you the date range and the time. Um, let's go over the search roster. So this is a really popular search, so we'll probably go over this a little bit more in depth. A lot of, um, a lot of agents use this to find other agent information and also to find um, a list of agents under their own office. So if we open up formats, um, your formats are going to default to office and agent. And what we can do now is let's just type in uh, Agent Realtor Association. We're going to use the island of Kauai. So this is uh, this field pulls from the board. So this is going to pull all agents under the Kauai board. And when we do go ahead and click search, you're going to see that first it lists the office information and it lists the agent under the office. 
so we have all their information here we have their city address their phone their office address and then it also label labels what their position is in the company so it's a pretty uh, useful tool to, to know how to use go ahead and click modify from here we can also search by agents in a particular zip code and if we want to we can search for agents by name and last name we can also do an office search so if we wanted to find agents own under a certain office we can use office name so for instance let's just use Hawaii Life and click here and then search so we have Hawaii Life Brokers office and their office information and then now we see all the agents under that office So this is a pretty uh, useful search to use when looking up other agents information. Uh, next we can look at search business. So from here we can um, pretty much pull any companies by name or by business type. Uh, we have the different company um, business types here. Uh, the status if they're expired or if they've if their business has been terminated or converted we can find the status here the city this uh, the business is located officers stock trademarks And then we have search license so we can search for individual agents license so for example we want to just look for all real estate brokers so we have quite a few but let's just run the search and see what we find which we'll is say we want to find the first 10 So we have the company name and then we have the agent's information and then we also have their license status here. So not a lot of people use this function but it is a per pretty powerful search tool. Let's go ahead and take a look at the search condo guide function. So if we go ahead and click here, you're going to see this search page appears. I'm just going to use Hokua as an example. I'm just going to go ahead and type in Hokua here into the project field. Click on this magnifying glass. I'm going to check this box here and I'm going to go to search now. So you're going to notice it gives you a little bit of information on the condominium project. Uh, it's the name, the address, the tax key. But all the detailed information is going to be available in this floor plan link. And what happens now is um, it starts downloading a PDF document. So this right here is the actual condo guide. And let's go ahead and open this. Uh, you're going to notice um, this document does expire. So it's, uh, it's just going to give you some information. This document expires 731. Um, so as you scroll down, you're going to see that it, uh, it gives you information about the developer, the architect, the building de uh, description. And what's really cool is it gives you a full inventory of the amount of units in the property. So it tells you exactly the amount of uh, two bedroom, two baths, uh, two, three bedroom, two and a half baths. And it gives you the, the living area and the square footage, which is pretty cool. As you scroll a little bit further down, it gives you the floor plans of uh, each unit type. So if we scroll down, you're going to see uh, a lot of different floor plans here, which is really, really cool. And that's about it for the condominium guide. Um, that, that about wraps it up with for the Research 6 search. Um, yeah, thank you guys for joining me today. Um, appreciate it. Have a great day.